had this gorgeous sister, a girlfriend of mine, right? She was so fine, you damn near had to fight cats off on the street, right? And uh, everybody wanted to go out with her. She was completely a knockout. And she, for some reason, she just liked me. And uh, she liked the drumming and all this kind of thing. She didn't know who Miles Davis was or anything like that. She wasn't a music person. But she was a beautiful woman, ridiculous. So we're, Miles is getting ready to open for Herbie Hancock. And uh, um, so we're doing a show somewhere. And I'm, Herbie was a playful guy, so you could sneak into it. We were all young, you know, I'm 26. So you could sneak into his dressing room and try to tackle him or something, or, you know, like some kind of silly stuff. We always goofed around. So I come in with my girlfriend and I open the door real fast because I'm going to try to do something crazy with Hancock. And Miles Davis is sitting on the couch. And I'm like, damn, there's Miles Davis, jeez. And uh, he's got like a hat down with the brim down like this. And he has this uh, real hip looking leather bag of, of, uh, uh, and, and he's smoking a cigarette, you know. And uh, I'm like, wow. And you know, Hancock can talk very hip. He can talk so hip, you gotta think about what it is he just said to you sometimes. But he can also talk really square and collegiate. And you, you know, he, go, he says all kinds of different stuff, whatever bag he's in at that moment. So he says to Miles Davis, in this voice, he goes, Miles, this is my drummer, Mike Clark, and his lovely girlfriend, B. Her name was B. And I'm like, oh, shit. You know, that, that, <laughs> that nah. And, and, uh, and so Miles looks at me, and he's, he's like, just like, he checks me out, you know, and then he looks at her and he's like, mm -hmm. he's checking, and then he looks, at, and, and then he goes like, this, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I said, man, that's not quite how I wanted this to go when I met Miles Davis, you know what I mean? But it's yeah. a funny story, man. And later on, I, uh, we played opposite each other, but he was bugged because he had to open for Herbie. He didn't care for that at all because in his mind, and I can dig it, he felt like, well, I discovered this dude and now I'm opening for him, but Herbie has sold so yeah. damn many records, you know. And then uh, one other time, uh, we were playing the show and uh, it was me and Paul and Herbie playing uh at this one part of this tune, and it, it it got so funky, I couldn't believe it. I didn't even know what was going on, man. I mean, it was otherworldly, man, and it was going down, and it was like, it's like happening to you. You're not doing, it's doing you. You're just like, oh, man, you know? And it's ridiculous, man, and, and especially when Hancock fires it up. Forget it, that's the top of the world. Game over, man, seriously. And Paul, oh my God. So man, I got my foot deep in it, like we're doing it. And, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm moving, you know, I'm, I'm taking it all in and playing and I just happen to look up, you know, and there's some, somebody on the stage. I don't know, I can't, my eyes are loud. I've always been poor, not, you know, so I'm like, I, I think it's maybe some roadie out there doing, you know, doing something. So playing. And the guy moves in closer and we're really getting funky. Now I'm on the cymbal, man, we're doing it, you know? And it's Miles Davis. And he's doing this wicked dance that almost looks like, do you, um, do you know what stop time animation is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they're shooting yeah, it, the like clay stop. animation, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and his movement is almost like stop time anime. It's just, and it's the funkiest, wickedest dance I've ever seen a cat do. It was un, it was unearthly. I was wow. like, jeez, <laughs> what? Oh my god! And then he comes kind of, sort of near the floor, Tom, and he looks at me and Paul, and he goes, "Fuck you, motherfuckers." Fuck you, funky ass motherfuckers. Fuck you, motherfucker. And then he dances off the stage, and I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck was that? You know, like, so anyway, yeah. I'm like, wow. Anyway, we do the show, and uh, 
I go back upstairs into the dressing room and uh, we all had a, and, uh, and Herbie says to me, man, you know, uh, I, th I think Miles was really feeling you and Paul up there, man. Did you check that out? And I went, yeah, I did, you know. And so then, uh, and then like a jerk, I knew that him and Herbie had been at odds with each other a little bit and not getting along so great. So I tried to make it sound. So in the most square collegiate voice that I have, I go, oh, Herbie, he really liked you too. And Herbie goes, get the fuck out of my dressing room. You don't gotta tell me <laughs> shit about <laughs> Wow. And, and Paul was like, ah, you know what I mean? I got back. Anyway, it was funny as hell. I had a lot of fun. Yeah, I, think, I mean, I figured I would ask the story about Miles because, uh, you know, I. I always grew up listening to it like kind of blue and stuff, but my dad told me he saw Miles in Hawaii when he lived in Hawaii, uh, the Aloha Bowl, and uh, Miles uh, played the whole time with his back to the audience. So I always had that impression of him. And then later I took a class with Lewis Porter at Rutgers all about Miles Davis and all that, all those intricacies. You know, we read the autobiography and uh so yeah he definitely developed that kind of uh that that aura about him or that legend miles davis but man, that's an incredible meet to meet he, him he, you know? I mean, he changed music so many times for all of us man he did so i mean i can't even imagine what what he was thinking he was so advanced you know i was like my, one of my huge heroes you know i didn't really get to know him but at least I had those couple of little cool interactions with him that are funny as hell to tell, you know, and I, yeah. I was, I was so young, I didn't understand uh, everything that I was dealing with, you know what I mean? I was just this young dude and it was just like, wow, I tell my friends back home and they, they had no idea what they were like, wow, you know, <laughs> Anyway. Well, I kind of know uh, exactly what you're talking about when you talk about like kind of uh, getting so funky and going out and like it's almost like the music is playing itself. Uh, that's like it's almost a meditative thing. Uh, man, I saw you guys playing actual proof on that YouTube video. And man, it goes out like especially when Herbie's doing all that harmonic stuff that goes out. Man, oh, you yeah. guys are probably uh, living on a, in a different plane of existence while that's happening, you know? <laughs> At that point, every night when you'd go to work, you were ready to visit that place and take it a step farther. After a while, I wasn't even sure if Hancock was playing the form, but I'd make the hits anyway. But he was really stretching it out, man. Wow. You know, um, he just seemed to want to break the rules and break barriers. You know, he was this kind of guy. He couldn't be contained. He refused to be contained. You know, he's a great cat, man. You know, like. Well, you know, uh, Mike, thanks for doing this. Uh, before we finish up, the final question, uh, like, uh, 